Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Forgecraft Evolved. I'm Max Evolved, and today uh, we got some problems. Before we get in there, do me a quick favor, scroll down, subscribe, and we'll hop right into this. Uh, so, as you can see, we're just, you know we're just starting it off right now. We've got a clogging issue. So, I wasn't. I, I guess when I first set this up, I kind of didn't anticipate that the problem will get, that we are in right now. So. As you guys can kind of see, if we, if we look over here, it looks like on this quarry, we hit a lithium mine, which or a lithium vein or whatever, which is kind of nice because we, you know, we're not bringing up lithium currently. So getting some from down below is kind of what we were hoping for. But it also looks like we hit a pretty massive and really uh, it's taken up two belts worth of stuff if this ever renders back in but we, we, we hit two iron veins so there's one over here and there's one over here they they're probably the same vein honestly but they're taking up two sets of belts so i need to figure out what can i do to help alleviate this and one of the things i'm wondering is if i am able to double up what we're doing here right so i'm using the new trickies hoppers which in theory you know if i were to do something like that and share does it share up it does okay so i'm thinking i might be able to and if i share that as well it should share back and forth right so i'm wondering if i can just really like just replicate what i have going on right here just right above it to kind of alleviate that ball neck. The only problem is if I look in here, plenty of conveyor belt filters, but we need advanced conveyor, conveyor filters. And you can see this little bottleneck we have right here. So we need to go make, or I guess reset up our primary upgrade module. And you can see, I've actually turned off the feeder lines. So these are the stuff we're bringing up from our little mines we have. And uh, yeah. It pretty much cut off all of our other production. So I'm going to actually turn these back on. I was thinking about whether or not I wanted to kind of do another lift for the, the one lithium vein we do have exposed and have that go down the conveyor. So we at least have like a more constant source of lithium because uh, I'm starting to see that this, this is going to be a game of volume and we're going to need just a ton of quarries going at all times to kind of keep these production lines uh, saturated. But for now, I think it's okay. This is another little thing. So I think I'm going to, you know, I, I was, I've been thinking about this in between episodes. I think this strategy right here, where I use these to kind of uh, ba load balance the belts out. I think every time I have a, a situation like this, where we're kind of sending bars up, I think I'm going to swap these out maybe for smaller hoppers, but, or actually maybe not because, but I, I'm gonna have all of these uh, storage hoppers in a row sharing with each other like I do down here because I think that's the easiest way to kind of uh, supplement any lines that might be lagging in, in materials and kind of just to keep going. Also, uh, I, you, well, I guess a nice little segue. I've also been clearing out all of this over here so much area cleared out because I want to at some point soon start planning for the tier two materials because hand feeding it to that one smelter there was kind of slow. So I decided to just build this right here so I could just kind of run up and take whatever. And anytime I do have ore, I just kind of throw it in and it's nice and easy, but you know, it's just kind of out of the way. And uh, in order to really maximize that, we're gonna have to just m mirror these setups. I'm a little worried about routing around the spaceship. I know we can, I, I know there's mods that you can get rid of that, but I may end up actually just kind of scooching it out to like over here or something, kind of just to get around this, you know, route everything here. And then I can always kind of snake it back in here to line back up with the factory. So just those are things that I've been kind of thinking about, things I've been kind of doing. And uh, I had to, I, I had to use some of this stuff over here 
some, uh, to temporarily make some some belts because we were kind of running low on uh, conveyor belts. And what are we running low on here? Oh, I mean, this is I guess it's just kind of slow. Plates are good. The wire, I guess the wires. Oh, I guess it's just the output of this, right? But yeah, we we definitely just need a ton of belts, and so it's nice to just run over here and grab what I need, right? And uh, you know, I, I was thinking a lot too about this. What I think I'm gonna do is, I think I'm still gonna stay with kind of having zones for each item, but I'm not necessarily gonna hook up, you know, tin and copper plates are maybe what we need the most, probably actually tin plates more than anything, but it's also kind of nice to like, to, to think about, you know, if we, if we look here, right, I'm taking raw copper, I'm just replicating that machine right here. So it almost makes sense to have kind of a supplemental line where I would just take extra tin plates and send them over to a machine like this rather than the raw bars. But then again, just going with the raw materials does make it easier kind of logistically. So I may still end up just doing that. But, you know, there's a, there's a couple other things. So we got we just got a lot to do, you guys, you know. All right, so let's see what we need here. So just 10 primary PCBs and power. Okay, primary is 10, I believe. So we can just go set that up. And I'm okay kind of... Uh, you know, setting up some temporary stuff for now because again, we need to really build up our infrastructure and our and our stockpiles really of, of materials so that we can then start kind of doing more advanced stuff. Especially the the biggest bottleneck that we have right now is power, right? So getting the items that we're going to need for power ready to go is going to be is going to be huge for us, right? So let's throw. Let's see. Let's give ourselves a little bit of space here. And I kind of want, I kind of want this maybe, let's just say right there, right? And it's going to take 10, right? 10 primary PCBs. So we are going to need, so for PCBs, we need, I think we need extruder, extruder coiler, and then PCB assembling plant, right? So there's that. Where's the coiler? I know we got some. There's a coiler and then... Oh god, this this is like the worst hot part of me doing this. Oh, here we go. And just like we planned it, of course, without any hiccups, uh, we got it all hooked up. So let's give it some tin, and we should should be getting uh enough. Should be getting some basic or primary PCBs. I kind of want to see and make sure, verify, and as it were, um. Ooh. Oh, that's already backed up. So what's kind of nice is that even though we are building building this stuff, this like real basic kind of starter stuff, once it we we're, you know, you don't need it in mass quantity at first. So once you kind of have it, it's it's just going to kind of sit there, right? So like this factory that we just built, even though like the, these outputs right here even though we're going to need, or even though we have them outputting, we're not going to need to grab any of it, right? Like we might need it at first, and then once it's kind of filled up its stock, it's just going to sit there. So it'll at least not take up, it won't be consuming our resources. Like, because you can see here, we're already kind of having some flow issues. And I wonder if that's because the lines down below aren't, keeping up. I mean, uh, what else would it be, right? Obviously, the lines down below aren't keeping up. So let's go actually take a look at that and kind of see what's going on here. So we can see, is this a production issue? Is that what's going on here? Did we not turn the copper back on? The copper is on, but it's just the one line. And we're also not producing uh, or consuming enough of this. So I did make a iron gear thing here and that'll at least consume some of the iron. Okay, so copper seems to be an issue and that's kind of some of the stuff I was a little bit worried about was, you know, are the quarries gonna be able to keep up with our, our demand? And so far it looks like not on their own, 
but also not without a way to, to clear up any of the bottlenecks they have. And, you know, once, once like, this backs up and this backs up, yeah, like, right now this isn't even getting anything, you know? Which, which kind of means, like, this method is not perfect for sure. It definitely requires more throughput for it to, to really work. But it's what we have. So, if you guys know another way to kind of... I, I hate to use priority splitters. I, I just don't like them all that much. But maybe we have to. Let's see. I'm pretty sure. Let's just throw that there. Yeah, so... If we were building that way, it, it would be nice. But as it is right now, the it prioritizes the right. So I, I want it to prioritize the left without having to kind of cross over like, like we did down below. So priority splitters just kind of aren't the way to go, I think, for us right now. I'm going to put these back in my inventory. But if you guys know a different way that we can kind of, I don't know, split this. I mean, maybe... You know what? Maybe instead of this, I actually use the... Uh, well, this is a little different because it's, it's taken right from the hopper. But over here, maybe I, I do just use the uh, the turntables to kind of make that work. That might that might be an option. I don't necessarily like turntables, but uh, you, you know we're going to have to do what we, can, what we have to do, right? So uh, let's check out how much we got here. 16. Not... Not... Uh, a stunning amount. Can we make more logistics conveyor filters? All right, so we can make six, Graphic. which gives us seven, which technically is all we need for the time being. So let's run over to the quarry area and see if we can't kind of plus up that whole thing. Yeah, so looking at this, I'm thinking we're going to have to kind of plus up this whole thing, right? We're going to have to to really double up or yeah double stack all of these hoppers for this to even get a chance to get looked at right I, I guess another way to do it is instead of hoppers using ooh I was going to say maybe we use um, zipper merge but I think the zipper merge stops working if you only have one input feeding it so it would need constantly like two lines feeding into it to work so that is also not going to work um, yeah, maybe I could do, um, I don't know if the sharing would work between this. And, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. We, we'd have to figure it out. So this is copper. I wonder if I can. Oh yeah. So it definitely doesn't. Let's see here. Copper ore. So it doesn't copy all the settings, obviously. Uh, and I think I made a miscount of one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this one just won't take out any of the tier two stuff. Maybe that'll work. I, I, I think that'll be fine. So we'll do this. Copper. Or. And invert. Okay. So I'm going to get this all set up. And then... We will, uh, I'll meet you right over there. All right, so here we are. And I've got the filters all set up. But I'm also realizing that we don't have a great way of grabbing from both of the lines. You know, like, I don't have a great way of putting that stuff onto these lines without it kind of backing up. So what I may do is kind of follow these lines right so do something like this in fact I don't see why that would be a bad idea so we're gonna just follow this line and then when we get to here do this number and we'll do a a down like no that's not what I wanted like that and we'll kind of feed it that way, right? Maybe that'll work. I don't see why it wouldn't work. But there's only one way I wanted to find out, right? And on one hand, this is still taking this faster. 
but we need to feed it faster. Like I, I, I need to do the thing I was talking about where I, I kind of do that number, sharing on, and kind of do that because then at least it can grab it from multiple boxes, I think. Right, is that sharing? On, sharing on, sharing on. I don't really know if I need to share these upper ones, but I'm going to. And then we can kind of just hook that up. And you can see the system seems to be moving. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. This belt is grabbing it from this box instead of letting that go by. Or there's a visual. Yeah, so all of these are kind of jumping back and forth. Let me just do that and make sure that's sharing. It's kind of nice to be able to walk over here and see that. But I think, and you guys, if, if you know better, please correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong because I, in theory, this should be working. And even though there's a couple lithium there, we are f actually getting lithium getting, you know, put onto the production line, which is huge, you know. And, wow, we got like a bunch coming out from over here. And uh, one of the things I want to do, I definitely want to increase our outputs. But I think in order to really do that, what I just did, what I just did for this right here, I think we're going to have to do all over the place, right? We're going to have to, maybe verticality is the way to scale this. Um, because... I don't see another way to really get the filtering going any better other than going up. And maybe that's not a problem, you know. It, it would be it would be trivial to to output, you know, one up top and then have these kind of aim this way, go up a level or up two levels or whatever, right? So maybe that is the way we do it once we get more or the other option is we just you know, we have a single dedicated line for each quarry and then we just add more quarries because we, other than hitting veins directly, if we were lined just on macerators, like we're not going to get a, enough ore. And uh, one of the things I've actually, speaking of the macerators, one thing I kind of noticed when I was messing around in between episodes, we get a lot of bug parts, right? Obviously. And... The pristine bug parts, in fact, there's probably a bunch sitting over there right now. Yeah, so we're constantly getting attacked, right? So if I pick up some of these, I know for a fact we get pristine, pristine stuff. But we should also get, yeah, here we go, ruined parts, right? The pristine, pristine stuff we probably could use. I, I, I know for a fact we can use it in some uh, recipes and stuff. I don't think I'm going to be going missiles or anything this playthrough because the defense part is, it's trivial mobs. We're not really here to build a big defense. So I could probably just do it all with uh, Mark III lasers or Mark III turrets or whatever. But so maybe, I mean, the perfect faceted eyes I know are good for lenses. The regular faceted eyes we might use some stuff for, but... I know for sure none of the ruined stuff we need. And I don't know. I you know, I honestly don't remember if if things can spoil on belts. Like the the ruined parts cuz I know f ruined parts if you leave them in a hopper, they can es eventually they'll just like spoil and they'll turn into rotten parts, which is nice for if we're doing a slime farm and we may do that. But other than that, we don't need, we don't need any of that stuff. So what I'm thinking about doing, because, you know, we get attacked very often and uh, these lasers, I mean, they're starting to not cut it as well. One of the things I want to do is look at these guys. Let's see. Do we have the Falcors, right? So if we can make some Falcors, we can... Uh, set something up where it collects all of the ruined parts, uh, takes the ruined parts, macerates them, right? Wherever we want to do that. You know, we can do that over there. 
We could do that over here. Uh, it might make some sense to do it over in this direction because ultimately, once those parts are macerated, they just, they'll output ore, right? And we can get all seven ore types from macerating bug parts, right? So what I'm thinking, we build a little Falcor network. You know, we have some beacons here. We have some beacons here over there. I mean, you see where all the stuff is, right? We have it over here. And then all of those Falcor networks, pristine parts, they'll they'll go, maybe that's where we can use priority splitters, right? Maybe we only need 500 or something of a, of a certain type. And then everything else just gets macerated. Once it's macerated, it'll output ore. We separate the ore with some advanced filters. And then we just have that ore have a spot over here somewhere where it just comes down and just gets deposited right into these boxes. It's going to be a bigger deal, I think, for the tier two material. In fact, maybe that's just what we do. Maybe we just have kind of like a feedback loop where all of, if it produces tier one, maybe not even just tier one. If it produces copper, tin, or iron, it just gets remacerated. But if it makes lithium or anything tier two, it comes down and gets smelted because those uh, these three are super common in the world, right? You can find massive veins of these just at the surface. I mean, I think there's like there's copper right here. There's lithium or a tin right there, you know. Iron, it's a little bit deeper, but it also exists in massive quantities. But lithium, lithium's even deeper than iron, and the tier twos are obviously even deeper than that, right? So I'm thinking that might be a nice way to kind of recycle some of those parts into a uh, into something usable for us, because right now we're gonna need some way of sustainably get in tier two and right now that's just me going down below and uh and literally hand harvesting this stuff right so uh maybe what what all do we need for that Let, let's let's like kind of plan this out so beacons beacons are easy well we need threat scanners and where's that threat scanners are trivial okay so that's trivial so we can we probably only need i don't know eight beacons maybe 12 beacons have three in an area falcors are going to be a little bit more what is how much is auto upgrader so the laser energy transmitter is probably the most expensive part of this servo motors we have a bunch of servo motors might be another thing oh lightweight machine housings are actually something else that i need to automate i can have those go kind of output right next to the uh, the belts from the factory. Servo motors, I don't think too, too many things need them after. Hmm. But anyway, we, get, we got a bunch of those. So really it's just... For the Falcors, it's primary upgrade modules. And I think we're making... Uh, well, I know we're making them, but... Let's see how many we've got. We got 68 primary upgrade modules. So maybe I'll just set up that Falcor thing right now, actually. Okay, so now we've got a little area dug out. So before I put up the Falcors, I want to make the processing area, right? So let's build a hot bar here. So we will do, I want macerators. I've got those. I want filters. I want belts. And I think that's it, right? So let's imagine. Let me think here. Let's do... Well, I, I don't know how much throughput this is going to be. So, or it's going to have. So we'll do... Uh, let's do three sets of three. Right? I think that's kind of nice. I want, them, I want them looking like that. I like that orientation better. And then we want belt, belt, belt. And then they will have a hopper with belts coming in thusly, right? And I think they need to output to, do they need to output to hoppers? I, I never remember. I think so. Yeah, they do. Okay, so they can be fed 
They can be fed by belts directly, but they need to output into hoppers. How's everything going over here? All right, good enough. Oh, jeez. I was trying to, trying to sneak up on me. We can use logistics hoppers, though. So that is kind of nice. So let's get those. All right, so logistics hoppers. We'll do these, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm thinking we'll just output everything in this direction, right? So there we got that. Now, now we're going to get into the first set of hoppers. I, I think what I want to do is there's there's kind of the two philosophies that I'm that I'm grappling with right now, right? There's the idea that we take out what we need first and then route everything back around or actually yeah maybe we'll just do that because i'm thinking the what i'm grappling with in my mind is the, the getting the belts crisscrossed but i think it's it makes more sense to take what we need first get that routing to where it needs to go and then then i know everything left over will just circle back around right so the first thing we're going to want out is lithium ore. So I'm going to get these kind of all set up and then I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. Okay. So here's the general consensus or the general, the, the, the setup, right? I'm going to have, this is all going to operate with one kind of key hopper. And that's this guy right here. And this hopper will have three outputs. One, two, three, right? One directly to there. And I'll make one kind of going like that. I mean, maybe this is overly complicated, but it is what it is. And then we'll have it come into here. And then we'll have that go into there. Oops. Kind of like the little curved ones. Okay. So one input that's going to split to three outputs that are also going to split to three outputs. I don't know if this is going to be fast or slow or whatever, but this way there shouldn't be any bottlenecks. It's also then going to have this, this belt, which will be the coalescing of all four sets of beacons, right? They're all going to be there. They'll all output and eventually come over to this one. So this is going to be the Falcor input. Here, they're going to output and it's going to say, are you lithium? That way. Titanium, gold, nickel, also take those. Anything else, aka copper, tin. In fact, I don't even think I need that hopper there. Copper, tin, iron. Recycle back into the system. Because when you, when you macerate those ore items, I believe you have a pretty high chance of getting the higher level uh, ores, right? The tier two ores, which is really what we want, right? And then over here, I have it so that this is lithium. The outside one's lithium. And I'll just kind of route it and it'll, you know, come down here at some point and get into there. But for now, I just have the tier two ores set to just kind of stack up right there. And I'll just grab them and manually uh, manually smelt them for when I need to. So for now, I, I think this video is going to end up being kind of long because I didn't plan on doing this. And yet here I am. Uh, I'm going to have... A beacon there. I'm gonna have a beacon there. I'm gonna have a beacon there. I'm gonna have a beacon there. Now the only reason why I'm putting down one beacon everywhere is because I've only got six power cells, six solar panels, and I'm just not trying to to get crazy with it, you know. Not yet. Once we get more solar panels and stuff, I'll add more beacons. But for now, only one on each side, right? And then what we're going to do... Oh, actually, what am I doing? I can have multiple hoppers, can't I? Because the... F or, yeah. Yeah, hoppers. Because the Falcors themselves are going to just 
grab this stuff, right? Like that. They're just going to go get whatever whatever they want. Um, let me put those in. Now, the only issue with what I just did is that I don't have any filtering set up yet for the pristine facet eyes, which is what I actually want the most right now. <laughs> so, maybe I should have done that. Here, we'll do, we'll do this number. We'll do... Um, four, five, six... How many? I have 12 Falcors, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. Maybe that's not the best way to do this, but it is what it is. So, I'm going to have these go into three lines... And then, oh, how many filters do I have? I don't think I have that. Oh, I have six filters. Okay. So, what I can do then. Um, let me think. This is this is going to be a little difficult. Let me at least throw the Falkors on there so they can start collecting. But I'll have to be fast. Not that, I mean, it's just going to be ruined parts into decomposed stuff. And I, I'm not sure, like, what what the decomposing things or the rotten things uh, macerate into, but let me set up these filters. Okay, so here's my thought process. I'm essentially going to have a set of four. So four hoppers are gonna feed into one, one of these guys, right? And I have it set up so that perfect faceted eyes will exit to the right. And I think, I don't actually know if this is true, but I'm going to have all of these connect and go to a, a hopper there. And then for everything else, you know, I'll have this just directly connect. And I think that should be okay. Why wouldn't it be okay? You know, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that, just like that. And then we just have a big hopper right there. So this should work, you know? Like this should already be outputting stuff. I kind of want to <laughs> verify that this will in fact work. Oh, see, there we go. So we've got titanium ore, gold. See, and this is what I mean. This could be a nice little boost of of material for us, you know? And all it's going to take to collect faster is to put more beacons down. So did that make it over here? Did it make it to its little box? Look at this. Gold, titanium, already. Already. So now the only the only I guess bottleneck we're going to have is the the uh, the Falcors themselves, right? And what's nice is I can use this, you know, for whatever I want. I don't need any of this stuff. Now I have a nice little macerator set up really close where I can just kind of throw all the stuff I don't want. Uh, I'll keep that lithium for now, I guess. But just like that, we've created kind of something that I really wasn't planning on doing and something that's really only limiting me the only thing limiting me is the amount of beacons we have because we have more than enough Falcors. So I guess as kind of a last part of this episode, like I can make 25 of these. What am I doing? Crafting. Let's throw all these beacons down. All of them. You know, I'll put one there and I'll put one there and one here and here. And I think they have a pretty large range. So we're not too concerned with, uh, we won't be too concerned with uh, collecting the parts because I don't think we're killing things in a larger radius than we are uh, able to collect. And on a, on a side note, that's 21 solar panels. We can use that stuff for powering things over here. And wouldn't you know it, another surface attack detected. I'm uh, anxious to see it happen. 
because I'm actually very happy. Oh, I, I, this thing is going to be kind of big. Yeah, we are not grabbing out the pristine stuff right now. Uh, maybe down the road we kind of expand this to be a little bit more um, discriminatory about what it takes out. But for now, I mean, what I really want to see is it it uh, recycle some of the ore, you know? In fact, so no lithium's come out. We've got some tier two stuff. But again, it, it's picked up a lot. Okay, here we go. This is this is the test we needed. So we should see this iron recycle itself. Yep, and go right back into the system. That is exactly what we want. Oh, it's working perfectly. There's lithium. And what I should do, I think the last thing I'm gonna do before this episode ends is find a home for the lithium. Find a way for that lithium to come down here. I think I'm gonna line it up with I guess this one right here. So let's kind of clear some of that out. We'll bring this. Perfect. I'm I'm not gonna keep this column. Ooh. You know what? You know what would actually be really nice? I'm not gonna do a belt. Nope. I'm going to do a matter mover. Matter mover is usually not the answer, at least not yet, not until you have the power infrastructure. But for now, I think it would be perfect. And then we don't have to worry about it getting in the way and kind of like looking strange. It'll just perform, you know? And the throughput's so low that just like a regular solar panel should be more than enough power. So the question becomes, where are my matter movers? Uh, I know I have them still, right? I must. I There's no way. Did I get rid of the matter? Oh, no. They're right here. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's put a block block. And then it'll aim down. And then we should just need one solar panel right on top of it. And it should just, you know, throw it down. It's going to be hard to tell until it's like not in there. Oh, yeah, it's not in there. So it already went. There you go. One item. Perfect. That is absolutely perfect. And also, we can use that, this technique, for backfilling the uh, the tier two stuff too. It, and honestly, if I really wanted to, if I thought that we needed it, I could, you know, get rid of this bypass filter and have it go for all of the ores and just do the same thing. Just shoot them down onto some of the hoppers over there. But for now, I'm actually super happy with what we've just done. And uh, I think that's a good spot to call it an episode. So thank you guys so much. Hope you guys uh, enjoy kind of the direction that this factory is going. And uh, with that, we'll see you in the next one.